Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial we will install Android 8.1 on Windows 10 using VirtualBox, allowing us to run many familiar phone and tablet apps within Windows. This tutorial assumes that you have already installed VirtualBox. In the event that you haven't and require assistance setting up this free software, please see our supporting tutorial Install Oracle VM VirtualBox before following this video. Having installed VirtualBox, we now need to obtain a copy of Android in the form of an ISO file, which we will download using the link on screen now and also in the written description accompanying this video. From the large selection of ISO files available from the download page, we select the most recent 64-bit version. Clicking on the corresponding view link commences the download. The download is just under 1GB in size and should complete reasonably quickly over a fast internet connection. Once downloaded, we can see the ISO file in our downloads folder. We will now set up the virtual hardware, ready to install the Android operating system which we have downloaded. Having installed VirtualBox in an earlier tutorial, we now open it and select the machine option from the menu bar, selecting new in order to create a new virtual machine. Note that the keyboard shortcut Ctrl N serves the same function. We begin by naming our new machine, and can type any name we choose here. For simplicity, we opt for Android 8.1. Should we so wish, we can change the location of the machine folder, but we opt to remain with the default. We set the machine type as Linux, as there is no direct option for Android, and we set the version to Linux 2.4, 64-bit. Now we set the memory size or RAM for the virtual machine. The default is set a little low for our requirements, at a mere 128 megabytes, so we increase this by using the sliders or typing in the box. We take our lead from a moderately well specified phone or tablet and increase the memory size to 4 gigabytes. In doing so, we are fortunate to be running on a 64 gigabyte host PC, so the impact upon our system will be negligible. Nevertheless, we are mindful when running on other host PCs that we shouldn't allocate too much RAM to our virtual installations if this will be to the detriment of the host. We click next to proceed. Having configured the system memory, we now do likewise for the system storage. Again, we will be allocating storage to the virtual machine by using a portion of the hard drive space in our main machine. We can opt not to add a virtual hard disk, although that option isn't suitable for this project. And we can load an existing hard disk file should we have one saved. However, it's our intention to install to a blank drive, so we select the option to create a virtual hard disk now. With the default selected, we click create. The hard disk file type can be selected from one of three options. We will use the default, although note that the other two options can be selected for compatibility with other types of virtualization software. Again, with the default selected, we click next to advance. We can now choose between a dynamically allocated and fixed hard drive size. We opt for the default dynamically allocated as the file size increases as the drive is filled rather than being automatically set to the maximum and therefore occupying the maximum amount of real storage space from the outset. Now we select the file location and size of our hard drive file. For convenience, we accept both the default location and name for the hard drive file. We select a maximum size of 16 gigabytes for the virtual drive, purely for testing purposes. Had we sought to install multiple applications, we could have configured a much larger drive. Again, our physical drive has to be large enough to accommodate the size of the virtual drive, whilst leaving sufficient space for the regular operation of our computer outside of VirtualBox. Conversely, the virtual drive must be sufficiently sized to store both our copy of Android and any programs we intend to run in that environment. We click create and our virtual Android machine is configured, waiting to be powered up. In our testing, we noted that the Android installer would not boot without changes to the graphics settings, which yielded the error x86-64. To avoid this, we right click on the virtual machine and select settings. The settings menu appears and we select the display option. We then increase the available video memory from the default 16 megabytes to the maximum 128 megabytes. Crucially, we change the graphics controller from the default VM SVGA to VBOX SVGA. This change of graphics controller was vital in allowing our installation to proceed. 
With the graphics controller modified, we run the virtual machine by double clicking on it. We are required to provide a startup disk and therefore click on the directory icon and navigate to our downloads folder where we have saved our downloaded ISO file containing the Android 8.1 installer. With the ISO file selected, we click open. This makes the Android installer disk available to the Android virtual machine and clicking start powers on the virtual machine and runs the installation media. Using the arrow keys, we scroll down to advanced options and hit enter. From the advanced options menu, we again scroll down until we reach the auto installation option which will automatically install Android to our virtual hard disk. Again, we press enter. We are now asked to confirm our installation and we use the arrow keys to highlight yes before pressing enter. The writing process then takes place without our input before we are advised that Android has installed successfully. We press enter and Android launches. Be patient at this screen and think of the time it takes to boot up a phone or tablet from being powered off. After a minute or so, we reach the Android language selection screen. From here, the process will be familiar to you if you've ever set up an Android phone or tablet. In the event that you haven't, our tutorial setting up an Android tablet picks up at exactly this point. One issue remains. We still have the virtual disk sitting in the virtual drive. We need to eject it to prevent the installation process recommencing once the machine is reloaded. With the machine powered off, right click and select settings from the menu which appears. At the settings menu, navigate to storage. Here, we note that the Android installer ISO is still present under the IDE storage controller. We therefore click on the disk menu and select remove disk from virtual drive from the menu which appears. The drive is now shown as empty. When we rerun the virtual machine, we simply press enter at the loader screen and we again boot into Android. That concludes this series. Over the past three tutorials, we have used VirtualBox running on Windows to run a secondary copy of Windows. We've tried Ubuntu, and we've installed Android. Don't forget to subscribe to see future projects. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFixFlix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFixFlix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.